So in this video, we're going to show you how to uh, fix or prepare this work that was created um, as a, a photo of an artwork on an easel and how to get that picture um, lined up and arranged and fixed for uh, your particular use. So let's take a look at it here. We're going to make it uh, zoom in big here and you can see how it looks. Um, let's see if I right click on it I can do this thing called create a virtual copy and what this does is this creates a duplicate um, set of instructions. Remember I told you before that pictures are a, um, a, a set of instructions in a Lightroom. They're not the actual copy. So copying that merely created an extra set of instructions so I can see the original and my new one. So you can make lots of copies for different situations and you only have one copy of the actual file. All right, so um, with that one um, brought in big here, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to the develop panel. And in the develop panel, we're going to take a look at some of these settings. Now, the, there's a lot of different settings. We got basic tone curve, HSL slider, split toning detail, lens corrections, effects, and even the camera calibration. What we want to do is jump into the basics panel and adjust our white balance, which should be the, the first thing you do. And right now it's got uh, white balance is set to as shots. This is how it was when I took the picture. Now, if your camera has some adjustments that it puts on based upon what it thinks the lighting situations are, it's going to compensate some for the temperature in the um, uh temperature and the tint as well. But what we want to do is sometimes we have to um, adjust it further. So in this case, we're going to check out what some of these features are. Let's take a look at uh, what's tungsten. Okay, tungsten would be a situation when you are looking at a picture taken indoors usually with old incandescent tungsten light bulbs. Everything kind of has a yellowy look. So what would happen is the um, camera would want to compensate for that by adding a blue tinge to the image. So let's see. Whoa! See how you see it just shifted the temperature way left into the blues. Now my picture was not taken under tungsten, so that's why it looks really odd. But you can see what happens with my point here. Uh, if you did flash, it would look different. If you did uh, shade, it would look different. Uh, outdoors in daylight. Okay, so all these situations are to adjust for those particular ones. And we're going to go ahead and just adjust this one ourselves using another option, which is the white balance selector tool. And you can click that, and then you need to identify something that should be a middle gray. And so let's see, right there. So that one's a middle gray. And so what it does is it then compensates the temp and tint for that being a middle gray. So you tell it what should be gray, and then it uh, changes the colors to address that. And so now I'm at 6100 and plus 24. I like that. Let's move forward. And now we're in the tone settings. And we have the exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Make sure you have your histogram up because these are all related to what's seen on the histogram. If you mouse over the histogram, in the middle it will say exposure down below on the left. So this is saying that these areas of the histogram will be adjusted using exposure. And then we move over and uh, highlights are here and whites are here. We go back over here, shadows and blacks over there. So if you tap auto, it's going to look at this and all those different sections and determine what you need to change. And in our case, when I click auto, it's telling me, yeah, you need to adjust the exposure a little bit. Yeah, you need a little more contrast, but whites are way low. And that's true. We didn't have any peaks over here, meaning that we didn't have any colors that were really bright in our picture. So uh, I could adjust these individually, but in my case, I'm just going to um, adjust down here using the auto because it works pretty good. But if you wanted to go back and say, hey, you know what, those blacks aren't black enough, I can move them over to the left and you get more blacks. However, I think mine are fine, so I'm going to double click the little dial slider and it will go back to the middle. 
All right, so now that I have that, let's go down to Presence. Um, Presence has Clarity first, and with Clarity, I'm going to zoom in. And if you are um, working on just one of the previews, you might not be able to zoom in one-to-one. -one. And it says here that I'm at one-to-one -one here on my left on my navigator. And what I wanted to do was uh, see what the clarity does. So I turn it way up, and you can see that it's basically increasing the clarity of the image. I put it way down. You're going to get more soft. Uh, looks like a soap opera or something. Anyway, um, I'm going to leave mine at zero because I think it's pretty good. Or maybe maybe a little bit more, maybe like five. And then let's go down to vibrance and saturation. Now both of these, and I'm going to reset to the fit size, and both of these adjust the um, uh, saturation. They're both adjusting the color vibrance in here, but uh, they work differently. Vibrance is a little more subtle in that it works from the colors that aren't vibrant first, okay, making those more or less colorful. And saturation does all of them at once, so it treats everything the same. Vibrance is good because it'll protect the tones of people's skin tones when taking photos of people. So you can make them um, look more vibrant without um, turning up their their cheeks, making their cheeks red. Okay, so let's see what they do. So I turn this up, and you can see how that how that dials up first in the sky, and then those colors in the grass start coming in. When you do the saturation, everything comes in evenly. So um, it's like the nuclear option is saturation. I'm going to turn up my vibrance just a little bit, about to pop point five or plus five there and I think I'm good to go. If you wanted to view your work uh, side by side you could jump back into the library panel and do an XY and you can see the uh, select and the candidate which the candidates my old one. So now you can see that um, I have made some good changes but there's some things I still need to work on. For example my uh, my picture still is not lined up correctly. So we can adjust that down here and we're going to do that through our lens corrections. So I'm going to bring down my lens corrections and I'm going to go to the basic panel and the first thing you want to do is see, hey, can I enable profile corrections? And I'm going to check that box and what that's going to do is try and fix the image based upon what ye, it knows about your camera and lens and all that data is saved into the file when you have a raw image. So, so if we want to enable profile collections, I can sometimes just get the job done. You can also try and check out what remove chromatic aberration is. You click that and that might get rid of any type of distortions that are caused. In my case, I didn't really have any, so I'm going to turn that off. Next, we can go down and see if we can adjust our upright panel. Now, uh, right now this is set to off. And what this is going to do is try and level this thing off automatically. If I click level, it'll analyze it and you see it turned it until this bottom line was level. However, these other ones aren't. Let's go see what vertical does. Vertical tried to create some vertical lines and it ended up choosing, I think, this part to be its vertical. See, I think this uh, the lines from the easel and the line of the uh, lamp over here is causing issues for us. Let's go to full. Yeah, it definitely didn't get it right there. Or auto didn't get it right there. So no problem. If the automatic ones don't fix your problem, which these are mainly for situations like when you're taking photos of buildings and such, uh, you can jump over to the manual lens corrections. And the manual lens corrections allow us to fix some of these things. So let's start with distortion. It's going to bring up a grid. And I'm going to take my distortion. I'm going to move it left. You see how that would fix a picture that was too inward. So you can change its convexity. And then you move over to the right and I think that's a little too much. I'm going to go to 3. Plus 3 straightened out my lines. Okay. And let's go ahead and adjust vertical. So now I'm going to adjust this until my sides look right my two sides and I think that's doing that then we'll go into horizontal and I'm gonna look down here at the bottom I might need to be a little more subtle let's see and maybe a little bit 
put that back at five. And then let's see what happens when we rotate here a little bit. All right. I like that. All right. So you could also adjust uh, things like uh, scale. You can zoom it in, right? I'm just going to leave mine at zero, though, or 100. And I'm then going to do a crop. So then I'm going to jump over here to my crop and I'm going to adjust my crop inward and see how we did. Very nice. And now it's done. And so now you can see that picture out by itself. So now let's go back to the library panel and see them side by side. So here was the original and here now it is selected. And I think I'm going to pick that one. Great. And that's ready to go.